Good evening, everyone. I'm John Pierre, Chancellor of the Southern University Law Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And I'm a proud member of the Peggy Browning Fund Board. I'm honored to be your master of ceremonies this evening and to welcome you to the Peggy Browning Fund 2021 Washington, D.C. Virtual Awards Program. I have also been serving in an additional role as the chair of the Peggy Browning Fund Search Committee as we have been recruiting our next executive director. As many of you know, after 20 years in that role, Mary Ann Moffa will be retiring soon and our board has engaged in a succession plan process as we prepare for this major transition in the organization. We expect to make an announcement about this in the near future, and the Peggy Browning Fund would like to thank Mary Ann Moffa for the tremendous job she's done in building this organization and wish her well in the future. Salute, Mary Ann. In the meantime, we want to add a special thanks for your continued support as we go through this momentous transition and prepare our organization for the next 20 years of contributions to the labor movement and the cause of workers' rights. Tonight, we are celebrating 24 years of providing law students with experience in advocating for the rights and needs of workers. And we're also honoring three truly outstanding awardees. These are leaders who have dedicated their lives to improving the standard of living and job security of workers and their families. Tonight's awardees are Fred Redman, Patricia Shea, and Barry Slevin. Along with our awardees, we'd like to thank the members of tonight's host committee for their success in raising funds during a pandemic help support Peggy Browning Fund's important program. So sit back, relax, and enjoy a beverage of your choice as I'm pleased to share the following message from the Peggy Browning Fund's president and founder, Mr. Joe Lurie. My name is Joe Lurie. I'm president of the Peggy Browning Fund. I'm also founder of the Peggy Browning Fund. Peggy was my wife, and uh, this fund was founded as a legacy to her. She was a very big believer in workplace justice, the labor movement, unions. I think she's certainly a person who uh, cared for people. She was a union side labor lawyer and she was the first union side labor lawyer appointed to the National Labor Relations Board. And she was passionate about the labor movement and believed in unionism throughout the country. And she was a progressive person and she put her words in actions. Unfortunately, about a year after she got appointed on the board, she developed breast cancer. And throughout the whole cancer, she never missed a day. She was the toughest person I ever met, and uh, she was impassioned about the labor movement and, uh, and also a great woman, you know, and a, and a fun, fun partner. <laughs> After she passed away, I decided to honor her by establishing the Peggy Browning Fund and continuing her legacy. I came up with this idea to encourage law students who are progressive and interested perhaps in the labor movement to work for economic and social justice in the United States. I decided that I could do this by setting up a nonprofit and uh, it worked. It worked extremely well. Our summer fellowship program is the first activity we undertook when we started this organization. It has become the central part of our work. Each year, we place law students with mentor organizations in the labor movement across the country, such as unions, worker centers, union side law firms, and nonprofit organizations. These students have the opportunity to experience what a career would be like advocating for workplace justice. This year so far, we've placed law students in paid positions 
at 65 mentor organizations for this summer. We have found an enormous increase in applications this year, over 23% more than last year. Some of this increase, we believe, is due to the fact that we were able to offer all of our 2020 fellows paid positions in mentor organizations. And uh, we ensured that our students could work from home and have a successful experience. The word got out and we're very proud of that. The second program is our National Law Students Workers' Rights Conference held over two days every year in October. Students participate in workshops, panel discussions, keynote addresses, and networking. On an average, we have 170 to 180 law students from all across the country. In 2020, because of the virus, we live streamed the conference virtually over three days. This was wonderful. We hosted 178 students and were able to draw from labor and employment law experts from all over the country. Our third program is our regional workshop program. I'm advocating for workers' rights. Each year in the fall, we coordinate one-hour panel discussions at law schools across the country, from NYU to Southern University, from Harvard to UC Irvine and Washington University. In 2020, we coordinated 14 virtual workshops sharing what it's like to practice law for workplace justice. We know that, that workers' rights everywhere are, are being attacked. Labor needs lawyers and law positions are available to young lawyers and older lawyers who come out of law school today and say, okay, I wanna do this type of work. And we hope that the fellows that we produce are passionate and add that passion to the work they do in the labor movement and indeed make the labor movement stronger. It's a legacy for progressives in the United States who care about the labor movement, who care about workplace justice. And without you guys, that couldn't happen. So I thank you dearly for uh, your contributions. Uh, we ask that if you know anyone, of course, who might be interested in, in supporting a program like ours and becoming part of our legacy, that you, you reach out to them. It's just been a, a great joy for me and in a sense, almost a gift to work on something like this after practicing law for over 60 years. So, yeah. yeah. Joe has carried forward Peggy's vision, building up and transforming this organization over the years. As president, board member, and chief volunteer, we can't thank you enough, Joe, for all of your efforts. Events like tonight's are the primary means for supporting our programs. We host similar annual receptions in Chicago, Los Angeles, New York, Philadelphia, and San Francisco. Thank you for all your support of our programs tonight. You'll notice that we are displaying the logos of tonight's supporters on your screen during this program. We recognize our Leadership Circle members, those who make annual leadership level gifts, and tonight's sponsors without whom this awards program would not have been possible. Also, it is my pleasure to recognize this evening's Steward and Guardian sponsors. If you are moved by the messages of our speakers this evening and would like to make a gift yourself, or an additional gift, feel free to make a pledge on the form below. We'll contact you later to fulfill your pledge so you don't have to leave this program. Thank you very much. Each year, we call upon one of our summer fellowship alumni to share their fellowship experience. We feel there's no better way to demonstrate the impact of our programs than to hear it directly from a fellowship recipient. Tonight, we've asked 2020 Summer Fellow Jeff Wong 
to share his thoughts on choosing a career representing workers and their families and his experience as a summer fellow during a pandemic. Jeff is a student at the University of Michigan Law School. He completed his 2020 summer fellowship at the Communication Workers of America in Washington, DC. Jeff first learned about the labor movement while he was a delivery driver and a communications intern. He then became a research intern at SEIU Local One and a volunteer organizer at Unite Here Local One in Chicago. At Unite Here, Jeff helped members win year-round health care through a 30 hotel citywide strike. Currently, he is a senior editor of the Michigan Law Review and a summer associate at Bret Hoff and Kaiser in Washington, D.C. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Jeff Wong. My name is Jeff Wong. I am a rising 3-0 at Michigan Law. After I graduated in college in 2016, I basically had a hard time finding a good job. I worked as a delivery driver for three months after graduating and then spent a year as a hotel bellman in Chicago. It was a non-union hotel and it was uh, extremely difficult work. So that kind of taught me how difficult it is to make a living in, in the U.S. Even as like a college graduate, it caused me to look more into uh, you know, issues of economic justice and workplace justice. And uh, I started volunteering with Unite Here and they were organizing a huge strike, like 20 to 30 hotels all across Chicago. That was a, a great experience for me. And so, yeah, that's what, that's what got me interested in the labor movement. And uh, I thought I'd be able to, to support the labor movement as a lawyer. Last summer, I was a Peggy Browning summer fellow at the Communications Workers of America or CWA. I was there for 10 weeks and uh, mostly did legal research for their legal department. One assignment I worked on that was really interesting was on defamation law. Basically, an attorney I was working with was doing a educational campaign within the union to uh, union leaders about how they can you know, build public support for their campaigns without being accused of defaming employers or, you know, facing legal liability for defamation. I could tell, you know, the work I was doing was going to be valuable for the CWA and the workers there. And then the second, second thing I really enjoyed was just uh, the attorneys I worked with. They were all like very talented and uh, kind people who, you know, created a, a warm environment for, for me and my uh, co-clerks. So yeah, I did my whole fellowship from my apartment in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The attorneys at CWA did a good job of planning virtual social events that helped me get to know the attorneys a little better. And the Peggy Browning Fellowship, the DC Alumni Committee also hosted a variety of events I was able to attend, like a movie screening and a happy hour that also helps me meet other people virtually, if not uh, in person. I am very grateful for the financial support that um, donors and other supporters provide to the Peggy Browning Fellowship. Thank you. It is really important that students like me and uh, working class students, students of color, and everyone who's interested in representing unions and workers is able to have this sort of professional experience while also not putting their own financial well-being excessively at risk. So I really appreciate it. As far as my broad interest in being an attorney for the labor movement, my fellowship at CWA just confirmed that and strengthened that interest. Um, it made me more confident that it was going to be a rewarding field for me. So it was a really great honor being a Peggy Browning Summer Fellow, and it's also a great honor to speak virtually at this event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. You truly represent the future of advocacy that we are all here to support this evening. At this point in the program, we usually encourage you to meet our wonderful fellows and alumni, representatives of the Peggy Browning Fund, who are here in the room this evening. However, since we are not together in person, I'll suggest that you visit the Peggy Browning Fund's website, www.pegbrowning.org. 
peggybrowningfund.org and click on the fellow's brochure to see for yourself why our mentors and many labor organizations that are hiring have come to prefer a Peggy Browning alum. Our first awardee is president of the law firm Slevin and Hart, which represents many pension, health, 401k, and other benefit plans, and is advisor to a number of labor organizations. His broad ranging experience includes all aspects of employee benefits law, including ERISA, the Internal Revenue Code, and related laws. He counsels employee benefit plans and litigates cases involving employee benefit issues. A charter fellow of the American College of Employee Benefits Council, he is also a member of the Employee Benefits Committee of the American Bar Association and a former member of the Attorneys Committee of the International Foundation of Employee Benefit Plans. He has been recognized in the publication Washington, D.C. Super Lawyers every year since 2007. The Peggy Browning Award is presented to Barry S. Levin, activist lawyer, pursuing justice, supporting the labor movement, improving the lives of working people. I'm happy to introduce tonight's awardee, Barry S. Slevin. Thank you so much for this wonderful award. I appreciate the recognition it reflects. Uh, what is on this award have been the guiding lights of my career, so thank you so much. I may work for large organizations, whether it be a large pension fund, a large health and welfare fund, or a large union, but uh, the workers are never far from our thoughts. I represent a lot of grocery workers, maritime workers, construction workers, drivers, all across the spectrum of working people, white collar as well. All the strategy issues, all the legal advice is all about how to further uh, the working conditions of employees. As a young lawyer, I was fortunate to be at the very beginning of the PBGC, and I litigated a number of cases of first impression about withdrawal liability and uh, employer liability. I was fortunate enough to be lobbying in the 1980s when the withdrawal liability provisions were written and read some of that law now and read some of my words. Uh, which is a very strange feeling many years later. And finally, I, I have been involved and in helped negotiate some major pension transactions to shore up the pensions of tens of thousands of employees. So it's been varied and there have been a lot of wonderful highlights. The Peggy Browning Fund is unique in its goal of trying to foster interest, educate, and direct young lawyers toward supporting and representing working people. Two of our associates at Slevin and Hart are former uh, Peggy Browning fellows. So we've had great experience. We sometimes compete against the very large law firms. Uh, they have summer programs where they in effect wine and dine their summer associates. I, I often laugh because they're wined and dined and taken to parties and baseball games and meet all the partners. Um, and then if they go to work at those firms, they never see a, a baseball game for quite a few years, given the working conditions. But to be able to place some of those very same students so they're supported and can have an alternative experience, that's rewarding in very different ways. And having their eyes open for uh, making a difference uh, in what you're doing. You're not just practicing law, you, you have a mission. And so the Peggy Browning Fund, by, by supporting that effort, uh, supporting its fellows, uh, really opens the ability and, and provides diversity for the profession. I am often struck for what a difference it makes when we have diversity of representation that reflects the workers that we represent. It is always more powerful when the union leaders I am working with 
uh, are people of color or or are, are immigrants, and they have a connection uh, with similar membership uh, that can't be repeated, that can't be created. And if you can have a lawyer who also has that same perspective, that makes it all the more powerful. Not only the connection with the union leadership, but also the connection with the membership. So the Peggy Browning Fund is starting careers for young lawyers, but those young lawyers will do good work and help working people for decades to come. And I am thrilled that the Peggy Browning Fund has been so successful in fulfilling that goal. I've gotten a lot of support. You, you don't do this alone. Certainly my family has been of tremendous support. My law firm, we have a, a great collegial group that supports each other. And George Dreesen kind of gave me my start. And I, I always appreciate the fact that he kind of let the flame uh, that started this long journey that I've been on. I hope I've made at least a little difference for a lot of people in their working lives to provide better benefits and a better retirement for them. So thank you for this recognition. Thank you, Barry. Our next awardee is the General Counsel of the Communications Workers of America, otherwise known as CWA. She has graduated from the College of the Holy Cross of Worcester, Massachusetts, and the Columbus School of Law at Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. She first joined CWA as a law clerk more than 40 years ago and has spent her entire career as a CWA attorney. Pat was born into a union family in the working class town of Worcester, Massachusetts. Her father was a member of IBEW, her mom a member of the Massachusetts Nurses Association. Three of her brothers were and are iron workers, and one is a crane operator represented by IOUE. In fact, Pat went to law school to become a union lawyer. As general counsel of CWA, Pat serves as the top legal representative overseeing all legal work conducted on behalf of CWA and supervises CWA's district and sector council around the country. I'm so pleased to present the Peggy Browning Award to Patricia Shea, activist lawyer, pursuing justice, supporting the labor movement, improving the lives of working people. And to accept the award, it's my pleasure to introduce to you, Pat Shea. Thank you so much. Um, it, it's truly an honor to be recognized in this banner by the Peggy Browning Fund. The fund is so important to educating and training our next generation of union lawyers to become union advocates. Um, it's so important that they get hands-on training and experience in dealing with real life situations to be able to better serve the community that we serve. And thank you again for this honor. I was born and raised in working class Worcester, Massachusetts. I grew up in a neighborhood that was filled with union dads and moms. I remember my father being on strike and my mother and I going down to the picket line to bring him lunch. So I truly went to law school to become a union side lawyer. This was in my blood. I started in, with CWA in 1981. Early on in my career, I worked with some of the founders of CWA. And that was an incredible experience. Just learning about how they used to travel the country to try to create this thing that is now known as CWA. When I am able to help out an individual or a group of individuals to better their circumstances, better their locals, better their families. It, it's very gratifying and very fulfilling. Management always has us outgunned. They can always outnumber us in terms of the number of lawyers they throw on a case. They can always outspend us. Um, so I think union lawyers have to have a particular perseverance and, and dedication to see the job through and get the job done. 
Well, with the pandemic, many CWA workers, both on the telephone side, the media side, public workers, a lot of our people are frontline people. They were first responders. It's been difficult. We took a, a strike action fairly early on in response to the George Floyd murder. Every CWA member across the country was urged to stop work for eight minutes and 46 seconds. And many, many workers did that. I think it's really important that unions and union side labor firms support the Peggy Browning Fund and contribute to it because we're training the whole next generation of union advocates. Uh, CWA in its extended form all across the country, our various districts and sectors have had 84 Peggy Browning Fellows over the years. And that's an incredible number. We have had 20 in the DC headquarters office over the years. They're incredibly creative. They think out of the box. They, they have a new mindset, which I think is helpful for the union movement as a whole. I think we tend to get stuck in our ways. And when you've got somebody coming in with new and creative ideas, and it's, it's inspiring. And it's inspiring to see these young folks wanting to take on the role of a union lawyer to better workers' rights. Something I think I would pass on and that I would tell young law students and young lawyers is don't think you're the smartest person in the room because you're probably not. Our members, though they may work with their hands and work with tools, they are just as smart, if not smarter, than you are. So pay attention to what they say, listen to what they say, hear what they say. I'd like to thank my husband and children, number one, but mostly I would like to thank all of the members and officers of CWA. You have enriched my life immeasurably just by knowing you and by working with you and seeking to help the workers that we all represent. Again, thank you very much to the Peggy Browning Fund for recognizing not only me, but all union side labor lawyers in, in the work that we do um, in, in advancing workers' rights and union rights across this country. Thank you. Thank you, Pat, for your critical work. You've done a lot on behalf of workers. Our final awardee this evening took office as International Vice President, Human Affairs in 2006, and was elected by acclamation in 2009, 2013, and 2017. He has been a United Steelworkers member since 1973, when he worked at Reynolds Metals Company. He served three terms as local president. In 1996, he joined the USW International staff, working with District 7 locals in the Chicago area. As Vice President for Human Affairs, he oversees the Civil and Human Rights Department, working with USW allies across the country to respond to right-wing attacks on voting rights and to combat economic inequality. He also serves as advisor to the union's Next Generation Program, which works to develop new leaders. He has served on the board of directors for many organizations and was recently elected as president of the Trade Union Confederation of America. Our final awardee is well known by the Peggy Browning Fund, especially by the fund's board chair, who is the retired general counsel for the United Steel Workers, Mr. Richard Breen. I'll defer to Rich now for a few remarks. Good evening. I'm Richard Breen, chair of the Peggy Browning Fund. From the time I graduated from law school in 1978 until the day I retired in 2018, I was a proud member of the United Steel Workers Legal Department in Pittsburgh. 
40 years is a long time. And looking back over my career at the union, I can honestly say the very best thing about it was becoming Fred Redmond's friend. Fred is a child of both the Great Migration and the American Trade Union Movement. He was born in the Mississippi Delta in 1954. Two years later, his family joined a quarter million other Southern Blacks, fleeing the open Jim Crow of the old Confederacy for the more subtle Jim Crow of the South Side of Chicago, where at least industrial jobs were plentiful. Fred's father, Curtis, followed that very same path. In the homes that Fred grew up in on the south side of Chicago, his father taught him that two things were worth fighting for, racial justice for African-Americans and economic justice for all people. With the support of his wonderful wife, Anne, Fred earned a BA at Chicago State University in 1980 while working full-time in the plant. He began his 47-year union career as a local 3911 shop steward. And today he is one of USW's top four constitutional officers. The thing that drives Fred is his hatred of oppression or exploitation of people, whether because of their race or gender or class or nationality or religion or politics or sexual preference or gender identity. That is why he is one of the prime moving forces in the International Union to make it ever more inclusive and diverse. Union work is a calling, not a job. And Fred never turns down even the toughest challenge, whether it's negotiating the contract at USW's biggest single plant bargaining unit at Newport News, Virginia, or making more than a dozen trips to Liberia to help the Liberian Rubber Workers Union in its fight against Firestone for living wages and safe working conditions, or leading the AFL-CIO's current efforts to redefine the role of police unions in a changing nation. The bottom line about Fred is this. I have worked with him for many years and I have never seen him do the wrong thing. As Peggy Browning Chair, I'm delighted that we are honoring Fred tonight. And I will now turn the program over to Chancellor John Pierre, who will bestow the Peggy Browning Award on Fred. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. It's my pleasure to present the Peggy Browning Award to Fred Redman, union activist, inspirational labor leader, supporting the labor movement, improving the lives of working people. It's my great honor to present this award to our final awardee this evening, Fred Redman. Well, thank you very much. And I'm so honored to received this prestigious award. Peggy Browning Fund has been an organization that have really, really enhanced the work that we do in the labor movement with the great uh, lawyers that they work with and introduce to us. So to receive an honor like this from the Peggy Browning Fund is indeed an extreme pr pr uh, privilege and honor for me. Thank you very much. I'm the uh, son of uh, a man and a woman who were sharecroppers in, in Mississippi. And I'm part of that great migration that folks talked about, that folks came from the South to the North. And I've seen the human transformation in our life. You know, my parents started saving and was able to afford their first home in, in, in Chicago. The labor movement, you know, helped build black middle class in this country. And I'm a, I'm a beneficiary of that. And the importance that young lawyers play in this movement is just not only necessary, but it's essential in order for us to stand up and fight for workers. You know, those sharp, smart, articulate labor minds, which I don't have. I'm a guy that comes out of the mill. You know, my, my job is to fight for workers, but the impediment to me, doing my work is a set of labor laws in this country that curtail uh, unions' ability in order to, you know, do our job and positively represent our members. So the end comes lawyers, particularly Peggy Brown fellows, you know, people who got into this profession because they want to do this work. So that mix of people with 
grassroots experience with these sharp legal minds is what makes the labor movement effective. And uh, uh, most of these law students come from working class families who can't afford to really, really explore these sort of opportunities on their own. So, you know, the, what the Peggy Browning Fund does is so vital and critical for the success of our movement that we need to support them. We need to assist them. The issue of racial justice is at the forefront of what we need to be doing as a labor movement. And for labor leaders now to be able to say proudly that Black lives do matter is monumental to, to the labor movement. And it reaches a community and a demographic in this country that is yearning to address issues of pay disparity, safety and health on the job, uh, low wage workers, uh, you know, and, and our future lives and our ability to connect with those workers. And, you know, I'm just so proud of our young lawyers who have dived into that fight. They're always willing to assist in terms of voting rights and other issues that involve racial justice. I just want to encourage all of those Peggy Browning fellows to please continue this work. You are not only helping the labor movement with your advocacy, but you are also helping our country become a better country and to fulfill its promise of freedom and justice for all of its citizens in this country. I particularly want to thank Rich Brain, who's been a dear friend to me and have really, really helped my transition into uh, becoming vice president. And I also want to thank former President Leo Gerard for taking a chance on me. And uh, then I have to thank my wife. My wife have went through this journey with me. And, uh, you know, I could not have done this without her and my daughter and my two grandsons. Once again, thanks to the Peggy Browning Fund. And I want to thank uh, all of the unions who participated and encourage more of our international unions to help us continue this great work. Thank you. Thank you, Fred, for all you do for workers and their families. Congratulations to all of our wonderful awardees from the greater Washington, D.C. area. And thank you to the members of our host committee. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's virtual awards program. It's been a pleasure to serve as your master of ceremony and to celebrate with so many friends and colleagues. Once again, if you are moved by the messages of our speakers, this evening and would like to make a personal gift or an additional gift to support students who are considering a career in the labor movement, please complete the pledge form below. And thanks again for everyone for being here tonight and supporting the Peggy Browning Fund. I want you to enjoy the rest of your evening. Please stay safe and be well and good night to everyone.